Hello everybody! Today we are going to learn about timeouts. So let's go check them out. Where is the timeout documentation? That's right, it's in classes index. Let's go there. It's under FL. So we have to look for F, it's alphabetical. There it is, there's FL. So uh, let's see now. We scroll down to FL add timeout. Actually, we want to just, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go Control F timeout. Like that. And ta da, there is add timeout. Okay. Adds a one shot timeout callback. The function will be called by FL wait after T seconds. Notice the first argument is in seconds. And it says it's a double, so we can use a float in Python and optional void argument is passed. Now this second argument is actually a function name. And that's how timeouts are recognized by function name. And they're also recognized uh, by the third optional argument. Now you don't have to supply this third op optional argument. That's why it's optional, but you can. Uh, and you'll actually see that there is kind of like an undocumented uh, feature that will be able to remove timeouts based on not only the function name, but also the third optional argument. So uh, if you want more accurate repeated timeouts, use repeat timeout to uh, reschedule subsequent timeouts. So let's go check out repeat timeout and let's go check out remove timeout because we're going to need those guys. So repeat timeout says, repeats a timeout callback from the expiration of the previous timeout. You may only call this method inside a timeout callback. Ha ha. Okay, very interesting. And then there is remove timeout. Notice also there is the optional argument that was passed when you created the, the timeout. But again, this first argument here is a function name. And uh, it's nice to know that it is harmless to remove a timeout that no longer exists. So let us go and take a look at the code. So here is a code. And to do ta-da, there is a spaceman blipping as the image on the button. Now you'll notice I'm not doing anything. It's This is happening through a timeout, and I think it's one second, uh, but I can stop it, and so I've removed the timeout. But let's go take a look at the code. Now, oh my goodness, look at the code. It's not object-oriented. Well, what should we do? We should, we should fix that first. We should actually change this to an object-oriented program. However, before we do, just note, take a look. This is probably the first time you've seen do callback. Notice that the timeout function, to func, which stands for timeout function, is actually doesn't take any arguments. Whereas remember, a callback function, so this one, takes uh, an argument. It has to take the widget that the event was received upon. Notice something else, which might be brand new for you, is that how do you remove an image? Well, that's when you set the image to none. If the image of the dot image, right, of any widget attribute dot image, if you set it to none, the image goes away. And of course, we're redrawing. Um, so you might ask, you know, why is it, why is this image being um, removed and put inside the callback? Well, that's because way, oh, and by the way, here's the button that removes the timeout. Notice the argument I send is the function name to func, timeout function, which is where the repeat and which is where the do callback is happening. So essentially this do callback line, we can actually go and take a look at that, by the way. 
Um, if we go to classes here, and you go to index, and then you go to widget, we can actually find do callback here. Let's scroll down, and it's right around there. There it is. Calls the widget callback. So in other words, we can force the callback of a widget without even having any events uh, occur onto it. So uh, let's go back to the code, and then we'll scroll down here. Here's where I'm putting the image, setting the image for the uh, to put it on, and I'm actually putting it on and taking it off in the callback. But right there on line 32 is where I add the timeout. Now watch this. Let me. Um, take this line out just like that and now if I run it now notice nothing happens here so if I click on the button I'm actually invoking the callback now manually and that in fact does click 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 I'm actually putting the image on and taking it off by clicking my mouse and clicking stop in this case nothing bad happens because I'm removing the timeout, which doesn't exist. Notice no problem there, which is good to know. Uh, but if I now add, if I, re if I replace that timeout to, to say, listen, one second after I start this program, execute the to func function, the timeout function. Notice this timeout function is not the callback function. It's the timeout function that's calling the callback function with do, uh, do callback. So what I'd like you to do now is take this program and convert it into object-oriented style. All right, so pause the video now and give it a shot. All right, so we did it. We converted the program into object-oriented programming. To do ta-da. So, Let's go here and we'll see we called we made a new class called image flash from FL window called the initializer send some arguments called the base class initializer and then we made a couple of buttons one of them is called stop but and then we called end to stop adding widgets we set the callbacks to the two buttons uh, and then we added the timeout or but actually we don't need to do this right now because remember we can just run it without it and then what will happen is it will only appear and disappear when we click on the image but there's no timeout happening and again if we remove the timeouts that don't exist nothing bad happens but if we add that timeout after one second, then look what happens. Yay, the image flashes once again. And we can stop it flashing. Oh, and one more thing before I click the stop. Look, while it's flashing, I can still click it. And it just simply changes state when I click it. But it doesn't speed up or slow down. Like, as soon as it goes on, I can turn it off, and then it comes back on whenever the timeout says it should. And I can stop it, and it stops. And then I can click it on and off, but the timeout is no longer running. So, that's, I had to type self a whole bunch of times, but you'll get used to it. That's called object-oriented programming. And, um, there's the callback, the do callback, and there's my timeout function, and there's my remove function, and there is the button callback to remove and put the image back on. Notice also here the if statement. I'm saying if there is no image, if the image is not none, then, uh, then take the image away. And if the image is something, 
or actually if the image is equal to none, then put the image back on. Okay? Okay, so as the last kind of assignment for today, uh, I'd like you guys to make a program that basically runs a stopwatch. Like it has three buttons, start, stop, and reset. Notice this button right now is disabled. I can't stop because I'm not running. Uh, but if I click start, notice the timer starts every second. Now this is an, as you can tell, this is an FL output. And I can stop it. And notice that when I stop it, uh, it doesn't, if I stop it, it doesn't reset, but I can reset it by clicking on reset and it goes back to zero. And then I can start it up again. And, and when it's running, also notice that I can't click on start again because it's, this button is disabled. And so this is kind of like a stopwatch. So give it a shot. And oh, but I can't click on reset while it's running. So 22 and then it resets, but it keeps going until I click stop. Okay, so try to create that program and we'll show you the solution next period.